Welcome to the Pharos Fit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome back to the Pharos Fit Podcast. i um, really excited about this, uh, this podcast today. Um, it's an important one for us because we're kind of obviously preparing for our, our reopening. Um, and we're still waiting on any kind of city guidelines and that, that kind of thing, but um, we, we've heard rumors about what we're going to need to do uh, and it's something we've been preparing for for a while and you know we're fortunate at, at Varos uh, that it's it's not just run by a couple of meatheads um, <laughs> if this was left to just me and Jeff um, God knows what state we'd be in by now so luckily uh, one of our partners is uh, Dr. Catherine Haker um, who uh, you don't work at Suicide like you own part of uh, how, do you, how do you explain no, it? I work at Suicide it's a, a partner a, a contract position Great contract position at, at Cedar Sinai. So she's witnessed a lot of what's been going on firsthand and obviously has been, you know, educated heavily in this, this, this kind of thing and um, has been able to advise us on, you know, actions we should take and things we should purchase and kind of set up and, and procedures moving forward. So we're going to delve into today some things we are, you know, preparing for at Veros and, and, you know, you know, ask Kate a little bit about what's, what's really been going on. So. I'm going to kind of hand you over to Kate for a second, and Kate, just kind of tell us a little bit about you know what you do at Cedars, and then and then what you've seen in the past few weeks, and where Cedars is at right now. Okay, so I'm a I'm a radiologist at Cedars. I uh, read a lot of cross-sectional imaging studies and do a lot of interventional procedures. And uh, Cedars, for the last I'd say about two months now, has been largely closed for everything other than COVID, COVID patients and life-threatening emergencies. So you know, emergency surgeries, trauma, it's open. Um, but any elective or semi-elective procedures, including things like cancer surgeries and orthopedic surgeries and, uh, you know, neurosurgeries, anything that can be put off has been put off. Um, it's starting to open up again now. The clinics are opening. Um, we're, we're getting a lot busier, but we were down to, I would say, working half-time, basically, and a lot of the doctor's offices were just completely closed. Um, COVID, our busiest um, was probably about four weeks ago now. I think the COVID census at Cedars maxed out at about 135 patients and, and now we're under 70 so it's dropped quite a bit not seeing a lot of new cases coming in now. And, and, and throughout this throughout this whole process you've obviously had pretty strict procedures in place for when you go into work like <laughs> temperature scans all that kind of yeah it evolved you know over the course of the first two weeks when this all started nobody really knew what to do but now it was a very rigid check-in process that we go through in the morning you have to go through a check line where they check your temperature and sanitize your hands and ask you a bunch of questions. Um, and every employee goes through it every day, you get a clean mask every day. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty structured now. And where do you think we are now in terms of, you know, the virus itself? And I mean, the, the CDC actually just yesterday came out with some new understandings about how it's, trans, how it's transmitted and so forth, which, you know, obviously affects us. So, you know, just some facts about the virus, you know, how are you most likely to get it, like in what conditions and that, and that kind of thing? Well, with every new virus like this, there's panic at the beginning. Right. Nobody really knows how it's trans transmitted. Obviously, before it hit here, we saw pictures of what was going on in Wuhan, and there were you know, many number of deaths. Italy as well, a lot of um, people dying. And so people were, were afraid when it first came out. But now it's become pretty clear that it's predominantly like any other respiratory illness. It's predominantly transmitted through uh, direct contact, uh, droplet, uh, you know, somebody coughs or right. sneezes in your face and you <laughs> inhale it or get it in your eyes. Um, CDC yes. today came out with new guidelines saying that it's really very difficult to contract it, not necessarily impossible, but difficult uh, to pick it up off of surfaces. So you really don't have to worry so much about touching things, um, you know, like grocery shopping, you don't have to worry about touching your fruits and vegetables, you can go to the farmer's market to, Packaging, you know, they take out from bulk, the packaging is safe. Um, right. Around a, a gym, um, you know, obviously people are touching a lot of things and perspiring and, you know, breathing on things. There's uh, been, I think people have looked at whether or not the virus is shed in perspiration and it really isn't very much. And right, so that's, that's relatively that's safe. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when we talk about opening back up again, I think as long as we follow you know, the, the guidelines that everybody knows about now, washing your hands regularly, if you proper sneeze in your hands, make sure you clean them, six feet of social distancing, um, you know, wear a mask when you're passing people, when you're going to break that six foot 
um, boundary, it should be pretty safe. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, although they've said um, about the, the surfaces being an unlikely source, obviously, we're still going to be, you know, sanitizing everything, and cleaning everything as, as often as we possibly can, just to be absolutely sure that, you know, everyone is as safe as possible. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people are going to want to know, like, from the moment they walk into the gym, like, what's the experience going to be as you, as you come through the door and what are they walking into? Well, we're going to try to set up similarly to what we do in the hospital. You come in uh, and have a check uh, at the door. In the, in the lobby, we're going to sanitize everyone's hands, make sure you uh, right. actually do that on the way in, and rather than just leave a jar of Purell at the desk and make it voluntary. You're going to have to do it. We're going to take everyone's temperature, at least at the beginning, and ask you questions about how you're feeling, if you have a cough and that kind of thing. Um, we were going to ask people to check in on the phone. We're going to get rid of the kiosk, the little iPod kiosk, so that um, so they just check it on the own. Check it on your yeah. phone. There's not people touching the same piece of equipment, and right. just walk right into the to the gym. And then the intent is for everybody to have their own workstation that we set up with a bar and a bench that you can just go directly to. And yeah. I think we're going to ask people to wear masks as they come in in the front lobby. You know, when you're walking on the you know the support staff at the desk. We're going to basically be exposed to absolutely everyone, and then once you get into the gym, to your workstation, you want to take your mask off. Yeah, and there'll be screens at the front desk as well um, to protect the, the staff and to protect the, 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 the customers coming in. Um, and then once they get through the lobby, as Kate was saying, like we've been careful now how we've laid out the gym, so every every rack, um, every piece of equipment, every piece of cardiovascular equipment is six foot apart. So the experience is going to be more like you have your training station and you stick to your training station. Rather than moving around, sharing equipment, like bopping around from, from thing to thing, you pretty much you know, stick with what you've got. Um, and then it's, you know, it's up to, to us as coaches to, to program sensibly so that you really can kind of stay in that zone um, and you know, not, not move around too much. And, and, and you know, if you think about it, if you come in, you've sanitized, all your equipment is sanitized, you're the only person using that equipment throughout the session and you're not, coming into con close contact with anybody, then it really is a pretty pretty safe place to be. I mean, I mean, I'd say certainly as safe as a supermarket or a, you know, or a, you know, well, yeah, we, depot. We, or, we have the, the luxury of space. Yeah. Most of our, most of the rigs down here are really 10 feet apart and they're 20 feet across from one side of the room to the other. So we'll pretty much have a 10 by 10 square foot space to work out in our own private space. Right. The recommendations are six by six. So, you know, area wise, it's almost three times the recommendation. So, you know, in terms of, Gyms were probably going to be one of the safest ones around. Yeah, and and in terms of like how we're gonna how we're gonna clean stuff, I mean, you recommended a couple of things that we've we've we've, we've got in. Yeah, let's talk about the fun technology <laughs> yeah, in, the, so, in this world. So, so yeah. <laughs> tell uh, tell us what's the what what are the top ways? What I love about this section is that Kate came in and she didn't just uh, like okay, here's what we need to do to implement as a quote unquote COVID response. She brought this in and I'm like, yo, this is gonna be awesome just for like, it's gonna cut down on time. It's gonna be so much more efficient. It's gonna be so much more safe. Um, so uh, I, I was stoked when uh, Kate came up with uh, a lot of these things. But uh, uh, go for Well, we were trying to find ways to um, really sterilize the gym that would work you know, really well, but also would be easy on the coaches because if uh, people remember what was going on here before we closed, it was basically poop running around with a bottle of bleach and a towel and wiping everything down every hour, and you know, we can't turn our coaches into a you know cleaning crew. So we're ordering um, these electrostatic guns. They spray a very fine mist of uh, whatever sterilizing solution you want to use, and, it, and the idea is that it actually charges the particles in that mist. And, and they actually have an electrostatic cling to whatever you're spraying it to. So it, it coats very evenly and completely um, whatever you're spraying with it. And we're going to use it on the barbells, the dumbbells, the yeah. kettlebells, and the benches so that everything you touch when you come in will it, have that. In my head, guys, this is like, you remember that scene from Predator when the guy stands with the big cannon gun and just shoots into the forest? That's, <laughs> that's kind of how I see myself. <laughs> Blast this gun, like on everything, it's going to be amazing. So good. <laughs> Great, so that is for uh, the equipment. And uh, well, I know your biggest concern, especially before we closed, was the floors. Yeah, the floors are, you know, when you think about where the germs are, that's, you know, probably the biggest, the biggest problem. And, and in gyms, you know, we worry about COVID, but really, 
thinking that COVID is less of an issue than bacteria like MRSA or right. uh, some of the you know, scrap that cause flesh eating disease, you know, those kinds of things are also a concern. So we're buying um, these devices that uh, use UV light to sterilize uh, the floor. And you basically run it over the floor like a vacuum cleaner. And it kills pretty much everything, bacteria. Yeah, I, when, I was, when I was reading the technology, it's, it's amazing. It's like, it kills like 99.9% like of all pretty bacteria. Much pretty all much viruses. everything. Yeah, but don't put your foot, don't get your foot stuck under there because <laughs> <laughs> three minutes and you'll be burnt too, Chris. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I heard that subways um, in uh, New York at night, right, they are uh, oh, using, yeah. yeah, they're using UV light therapy and it's uh, really effective. They have the room ones. Um, which are, I guess, safe for people, but the floor unit is definitely well, the floor concentrated. Unit is, <laughs> concentrated, yeah. Because they're quick, yeah. the ones that are safe for people take them. Right, take a long time. But they're using these systems now in operating to sell our floors or sterilizing. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing to me that this hasn't come out sooner. I mean, I know that, I know that knowledge is out there and the technology is right. out there, but from day one, this wasn't like, you know what you should do? Right. You should get a bunch of UV lights. Yeah. So well, their market obviously has gone up 5,000%. Right. Um, and then I know another big thing is obviously like air, right? Airborne respiratory yeah. illness. So air and um, like filtration and ventilation and things like that. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing about that? Well, the majority of the gym is that the ceilings are so high and the fans create so much circulation that it really is more like being outside. It's not really a contained space. So we're not worrying about it for most of the gyms. Right. But it's obviously a problem in the locker rooms, especially in the shower areas. So we're going to put HEPA filters in there. Right. What are HEPA filters? HEPA filters, are, it's an air filter that filters out. There are several different types of them, but the ones we're getting actually filter out particles as small as viral particles, which so if anything is in the air. Just cleans the air. Yeah. yeah. And we're also going to put up some um, areas between the showers and you know, try to make it a little more. So when you go in there and shower, space. it's a contained space, you yeah. have your own space. Yeah, and people are going to have to bring their own showers, right? They're not going to be... Well, showers? We'll chat, we'll, we'll chat about what the policy is for... We're, we're figuring out what towel service, as you guys know, if you come to Pharaoh's, towel service is something that we've offered. Uh, and um, if it's still a question of, you know, whether people like that or just whether they'll feel safer grabbing their own towels. Uh, we are giving everyone a towel for disinfectant upon entry and having spray bottles at each station. So you kind of have like your own, uh, your own disinfecting towel and um, spray. Uh, but yeah, towel service is something we'll definitely have to discuss and explore and probably get feedback from you guys. <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, like as I said, we're, we're still awaiting any kind of like help or information from the city. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I watched, <laughs> I feel like I watch the news and they kind of mention every industry apart from gyms, um, probably because they don't really know uh, or they don't think it's, I don't know, a major industry or whatever, or we don't have strong enough lobbyists, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, we are, we are you know, still awaiting you know, any real information, so obviously we will act upon whatever information we get. But we've seen from obviously other states that have opened and gyms have been allowed to open, and, you know, some general kind of thoughts of what you know, the experience should look like. And I think we'll go above and beyond anything they could you know, ever ask for. So I think we're, we're pretty you know, confident about that. Um, I just want to talk about what you've done in the gym. Yeah, I mean, in terms of you know, the gym itself, we've obviously added a lot, of, uh, a lot of new equipment, again, to make it so that everyone can kind of have their own training zone. So. Um, uh, we have more cardio, we have uh, I put up a bunch of new ball targets yesterday, we put up a bunch of new, um, I always call it, uh, these plastic, how's that, what do you call them? Plexiglass. I don't call them Perspex, you call them Perspex. The Plexiglass, um, how's that push-up stuff. Um, we, we repainted, we redecorated, it looks super slick. So yeah, pretty cool. much the entire gym is painted. <laughs> Yeah. Repainted like every square inch. I ordered a, a bunch of new, new benches so that everyone has their own bench press station, which is obviously very there's not, important. There's nothing more important than bench day, <laughs> um, except for squat day. Yeah, and then we uh, obviously we, we spaced uh, in the train room. We spaced out all the cardio so it's everything's a minimum of six foot apart. Most of it's you know eight foot, um, and we'll you know structure things differently up there. Um, fight and train will probably you know flip flop. Yeah. Up, you know what I mean? 
Um, so cute word. Yeah. So that obviously they want too many people in the same space at the same time. Um, and then the open gym, the same thing. We separate all the equipment so everything's six foot apart. And then we'll be a, there'll be a limit on the amount of people we let in there to make sure it's not you know, overcrowded. Um, exactly what that number is, we're not totally sure, but it'll be around 20 probably. No more than 20 in the gym at any one time to make sure there's no overcrowding. Um, and yeah, and just generally, like, oh, we just bought some new lockers. They're just coming to keep everything like off the floor and everything tidy. Oh, the lockers look so good. Okay. I love yeah, that. Yeah, bye-bye, Cubbies. Yeah, and uh, you know, as I as I was saying, you know, yesterday, as we do open, and if we, you know, realize that we need more stuff, then we'll, we'll get it because figure it know, out. We'll figure it out because obviously your your training experience is, is the main thing here, and you you feeling like you're you're coming in and getting a great session, you know, despite the limit, the limit, limitations that we have. And honestly, I feel like whatever they come up with, whatever they say that we have to do, I think we'll be able to, you know do it and you know you'll still get just as good of experience as you always have and i don't think i don't think you'll lose that community um you know group dynamic in, in, in any sense of course of course you won't be able to do the chest bumps and the, the high fives and the hugs so much but you know you'll still be with the same people in the same space doing the same thing you'll just be slightly more separated you just got to shout a little louder but man i really can't wait for the day that we can chest bump again I know. <laughs> it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I also kind of wanted to talk about just in, in general. Obviously, we, we're very passionate about this. We believe gyms are very important, and they are an, an essential business. Uh, and Kate, uh, you know, from your from your perspective, why are why are gyms important? Why do we need to stay healthy, just in a basic sense? Well, and more importantly than that, because I feel like you won't go into it unless I prompt you. But like <laughs> your, you know, we we all say that we all got into this because fitness saved us to some extent. And um, I know you have had a, a long uh, a long walk and several pounds of experience. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, dive in. You want me to tell me? How I got into it. Well, yeah, just how, you know, you're obviously, you're obviously a partner in this endeavor because you believe that, like, fitness has, you know, you want to pay this forward because fitness has saved your life and you believe gyms are essential, so, you know. Yeah, well, um, about 10 years ago, now, eight, eight years ago now, I was, um, I had had a couple of kids and um, they were getting a little older and over time, eating kid food for 15 years, I put on a full bunch of weight and was really out of shape. And um, you know, my, my mom was kind of dependent on me financially for the housing and my sister was living with me and I was kind of scared because I had no life insurance. And so I decided to get some life insurance and they sent a physician to my house and did a life insurance physical, which I completely flunked. They denied um, you. They denied me life yeah. insurance, yeah. Whoa, I, my God. Yeah, I was um, almost 200 pounds. I had my blood pressure was 185 over 115. I was borderline diabetic, my cholesterol was in the high 300, and yeah, I was denied life insurance. So oh, sure. I decided I had to do something fast, and I made some contact with a trainer that I had known from years ago, Madeline Morris, from, she's at Click now, and uh, started working out, dropped 50 pounds, doing basically keto really quickly, and then started doing CrossFit, and did CrossFit for about four years, and that's how I met Emily, and uh, got injured a couple times doing CrossFit, and realized that... Um, you know, when you're 50 years old, it's probably not the time to be figuring out how to do the thing you've never been able to do in your entire life. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, to do something that was long-term sustainable, CrossFit was probably not it. So we started talking about CrossFit-type workouts that, you know, you have the same benefit without the highest gymnastic stuff. And then I started training with Emily, personal training, and uh, she introduced me to... These meatheads! These meatheads, we had one dinner, and that's... That was it. About two hours, we decided we were going to... Do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're gonna get married. We didn't know each other. Let's yep. go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what uh, biggest wrong? risk of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and three years later we're doubling down. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, and I and I think just in, in a general sense, I think it's important to remember that, you know, with any with any virus, um that the, the better your immune system and the healthier you are, the greater chance you're gonna have of, of, of surviving it. You know, this isn't gonna be the last virus that comes around. This isn't, gonna, this isn't gonna be the last you know, illness that's a problem. You know, heart disease, diabetes, you know, all these things that are so prevalent in, in today's society. And well, and also it, what you're seeing with people now who've been locked up for two months is just the mental right, the mental strain of it, just being locked up yeah. Yeah. inside and needing some 
community support is seems important as well. Right. Yeah, that's been the biggest thing with, you know, okay, so quarantine hits and we do the limitless challenge, boom, set you up with the coach, and then we got skills going on, and like as you know, now two months and we're going in on the third month of this thing. The best feedback that we've gotten from everyone is like, it's just so nice to connect. Like, and you know, more than the fitness, more than the skills, more than all the, all the challenges and all the stuff and the leaderboards. It's like, it's just so nice to connect with people and to, uh, you know, um, like have a little light in the day, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, I mean, a lot of people, you know, it's different for us, obviously, because, you know, we have each other and we, we have a kid. Um, but a kid. I, you know, the kid. So a lot of people, you know, they're, they're on their own um, and they're not seeing anybody all day. Mm -hmm. And. You know that that situation is awful. And to be in that situation for three months, I mean, God, yeah, terrible. Terrible. It's awful. And we're all still here, so even if the four of us are right. together, you know, in this year, we still see right. people. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're all you know, obviously, we're hoping and praying that this this isn't going to go on for too much longer. And then it's our it's our job and our duty and our and our privilege to obviously serve yeah. you, serve our members, and you know, we're going to do that obviously to the best of our ability and you know obviously we've taken on uh, Kate's advice and also, uh, and also Gina. Gina came in and Gina's the... Gina, Gina Welsh is a member here and uh, Gina, I'm going to mangle her title and she's going to get upset, but she's the Director of, of Clinical Practice and Education for the Nursing Department at Glendale Memorial. Right. And she right. took over that job right as this hit, right at the beginning of March and she's right. just been in the thick of it. She's been in charge of basically all these policies and procedures for that enormous hospital and she came here last Sunday and spent two hours walking through the place with me and you know, talking about what to do. It was actually really helpful. Right. That's great. We got a task force, baby. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. One, one so thing good. we've all learned about, you know, through this kind of thing is you need a task force to get anything done. Yeah. And then you get a task true. force for the task force. Yeah. And a task force to decide the task force. Yeah. And a plan to and phase, lots of phases. And a phase to plan. Lots, you need lots of phases. <laughs> Everything needs a lot of phases. And deeper in them phases. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys want to add anything else? That's pretty much. What do you guys what are you anticipating and kind of watch for these these conferences? What is the, the Ew. Um, I think, Are we taking bets? Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> I mean the latest is gonna be is July fourth. It's pretty much a, all businesses be open just in some degree by July fourth. I mean I watch the news every day and I I, I I just can't understand how they can justify keeping us shut down for much longer. I mean, it doesn't make a lot June, of sense when Target is open. It doesn't make any sense. Open, yeah. You know, you know. They don't come in again. Or even, and I'm proud that they're open. I'm not saying it, and they should, you know, and like, you know, but car washes are open now. I mean, like, people are, in, you're, you're letting people go inside your car and clean your car. And it, I mean, it just seems weird to arbitrarily kind of choose and decide what's risky or not. But I do hope that obviously the numbers continue in the trajectory that we want that allows us to open. Um, and that we can do so as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, and because it's not, you know, again, it, it's, well, it's not just us. Like a lot of our members have, have lost their jobs um, or yeah. I've had a drastic reduction in, in salary. Um, you know, everybody's It's true, it doesn't really matter suffering. if we're open if nobody else is, right. if nobody else can be working. So it's kind of like right. a, you know. So we, hope, we obviously <laughs> hope all our members can, can get back to, to work. Absolutely. Soon, and, you know, their lives can get back to some, some kind of normalcy. So we can all, you know, get back to business together. You know, obviously, it has to be different. It has to be, you know, it has to be cleaner. It has to be safer. We have to abide by all these, you know, these things. But you know, we're prepared um, and we're ready. And I know a lot of our members are ready because they're written in. So yeah, I'm so ready. <laughs> um, so yeah, we 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 we're good to go. We just hope the, you know, we hope the city and and the governor and everyone involved, you know, appreciates the situation that we're in, and. <laughs> Helps us out real soon. <laughs> Best of luck. Best of luck. Yeah. SOS. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is going to be going on for a very long time until there's a, right. a vaccine. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know, the earliest that's going to happen is the fall, and the latest could be two years from now. Right. So, so we have to find a way to live. We have to, yeah. we have to find out a way to, 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 to do this without just locking ourselves away, you know? And without just <laughs> Hail Mary. Go, go at it, you know, yeah, there, exactly. there are ways for us to um, operate safely and to mitigate as much risk as humanly possible. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Yeah. All right, guys, with that about, uh, Brandon, are you still there? <laughs> but it's still, still here. Still there. Yeah. 
Okay, guys, that about wraps it up. Um, I hope that was interesting for you. I hope that uh, kind of sets your mind at ease and, you know, let you know a little bit about what we've been doing here. I, I know a lot of you guys have been, you know, excited to come back and been asking a lot of questions about what are, what are we doing and when, when can we open and all this kind of stuff. As I just said, like, as soon as we get the, the all clear from the city, you know, good to go. Um, we're prepared for this and um, we're, we're very much looking forward to, to seeing you all uh, whether you're wearing a mask, whether you're not wearing a mask, um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll we will continue to provide uh, the very best in, in fitness experience. Uh, and thank you, Catherine, for uh, your insight and, and coming today and uh, and letting our members know what you know what your experience has been and what your you know input has been here. And um, yeah, I think it's just really interesting for people to hear from someone like yourself, who's, you know been in the medical field since this thing started and it's seen kind of first hand what's been going on. And um, I, I, I kind of find, I, I kind of feel like the longer this goes on, a, a sense, and we get a greater understanding of things and that the, the, the truth and the reality of the situation as opposed to like the rumor and the panic and the, the fear and all that kind of stuff which kind of took over in the beginning. I hope that people kind of like are slightly less fearful now than they were, you know, a few weeks ago. I think the point is, is to establish your team and set into your team and, and maintain it. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Keep safe. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, guys. Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We will be back real soon. Stay safe out there, and we will see you real soon. Uh, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Catherine. See you, guys. <laughs>